Yeah. yeah. In the same vein as what you were just saying, how much does having these elite defenses you have this year and the past few years affect what you call offensively and maybe even open up the playbook to what you're willing to call uh, I, I mean, it affects it a lot. I think that's with every team uh, out there. I mean, you know, if you want to be a good team, I think that uh, you always have to, you know, kind of play to your strengths and uh, protect your weaknesses a little bit uh, to give yourself the best chance to win you know, week in and week out. And so there's been certain games where, man, things have happened and we've gotten pretty good leads on teams. And they're like, well, dang, I'd really like to do some of this, but, you know, uh, all you can do is really kind of screw it up, you know. I mean, you, you, you've pretty much got the game won. So sometimes you you might play a little more conservative. Uh, other times you're in a tough matchup and you know your defense is going to kind of really have their hands full and, and you might be a little more aggressive. Uh, you know, so it just – you got to pay attention to the game and what's going on when you get in certain situations. Uh, sometimes, you know, crazy things happen. You may get out to a big lead, big lead early. And uh, so, you know, you just, you might change your plan a little bit and just, you know, let's just play smart and uh, take, you know, we're all punting the ball. Uh, we got a defense that they can't move the ball. And they're going to screw it up. They're going to turn it over. They're going to give a short field, you know. So uh, I think those are always things as a coach that you're, you know, evaluating and you just got to be cognizant of as you, as you go through the flow of a game. Coach, last week, Alex uh, Spence was able to convert on the field goal that you guys put him out there at the end. How's he responded since the kicking game was opened up, as you opened up the uh, yep. kick game of last Well, he, he's responded in that he's competed his tail off and he kept the job. That's why he went out there first, all the way through pregame. I mean, literally, they brought me pregame, uh, the stats, after the kicks. I think they were all six for six and one was five for five, all the way through pregame, all the way through. And, uh, and so, we just cleaned the slate, started over, brought another kid in, said, all right, we're not going to do anything, we're, but make layups. And if you can't make a layup, you ain't playing. So, you, you know, I mean, I don't allow us to – so let's go. And we gave, we gave him all the same kicks. And, uh, and he came out on top. He didn't win the job for life. He won the job for the week. And, uh, you know, that's just where we are, you know. Uh, it's a week-to-week -week basis around here. Kind of like me, you know, lose a couple games around here, they, they'll run you off quick. Uh, so everybody's week to week, week to week. That looked to be about as excited as you've been about a big field goal outside of maybe a game winner or a late game tie. No question. Uh, and you know what? I was excited, but I was happy for him. I was so happy for Alex. I mean, you know, just because I know we can do it. I've seen him do it. I mean, the kid's got really – very good talent. I mean, he he can kick it, man. Uh, he just it just kind of wasn't showing up for him. And you go out there and it's you know bless his heart, it's a dang monsoon, you know, of all things. And now he's got to go kick a field goal, and the snap's high and inside. Uh, I think on that first extra point or whatever. But you know, he just uh, he just did a good job uh, of 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 hitting it. And he needed it. I mean, we all needed it. Uh, and I was happy for him too because he had a great. He just had a great couple weeks of practice and finished up uh, Thursday, Wednesday and Thursday, just really, really strong. And, you know, just good to see him go have the success on the field. And now he's just got to build some consistency in that. Because uh, at the end of the day, I mean, it's, I mean, it's pretty easy. I mean, it either goes through the pipes or it doesn't. And, uh, you know, it's a tough position to play. It really is. And so uh, I was very happy for him. He needed that. We certainly needed that. And uh, hopefully that's a good uh, boost of momentum for him the rest of the way. But, you know, they're going to, like I said, we're going to keep charting uh, every day, every week. And uh, uh, from when we started, scratch, from scratch, and also on a weekly basis. And just kind of keep creating that, that pressure in practice uh, the best we can. Uh, so hopefully when they get to game day, it's easier. How do you create that pressure in practice? Well, they all know every kick matters. And then, uh, you know, we, we just, we're, we're <coughs> making them compete and we're making them compete in front of their teammates. And sometimes that's, that's harder to do than, than going out on game day, you know, uh, and, and kicking. Uh, so that's really all you can do.
because of your dad, your history, guys. Um, what's it mean to you to be be kind of in the ranks there with Coach Howard and Coach Ford now with where you're at this season? Uh, you know, it's just it's awesome. I mean, it's special. Uh, you know, because uh, you know, to he told me nine years ago. I mean, I've been here, been head coach. It was nine years in October, and uh, so to be where we are, uh, you know, that's a, a dream come true. You know, you always dream about getting a job, and and you and you yeah, you have a vision for being successful. Uh, I, I mean, I never had a vision for getting a job for three or four years and getting fired. Uh, that was never my plan. You know, uh, and so to be here nine years later and. And uh, you know, Coach Ford, Coach Howard, their success here is, is well documented. Uh, I think it's kind of weird that we all have 96 AC whatever wins as ACC coaches. That's the strangest stat ever. Uh, I just want to get 97. Uh, you know, that's something neither one of them did. So if I can just get to 97, uh, you know, we'll, we'll be we'll be doing good. Uh, so hopefully, I can. Be around here a little longer. Coach, then it's great. You mentioned that uh, critical mistakes are what these entities made in the two losses. What did Notre Dame and South Carolina do to help bring those about, and how important is it that you guys play clean games on Saturday? Well, you know, the South Carolina game early in the year, there's a lot of emotion in the game. First game, that's, you know, and they just put the ball on the ground. South Carolina did a good job of stripping it, ripping it, and, and, uh, and made some bad decisions. Um, and then the Notre Dame game, probably the play of the game was. Um, you know, they jumped offside, and, and you know, it looked like he was offside, but they, you know, they, they, didn't, they didn't get the call, and so the quarterback just threw one up because this quarterback don't make many mistakes now. He he's he, he takes care of the ball, but he just kind of throws one up because he thought he had the call, um, and kid picks it, just walks it into the end zone. That was the that was the critical mistake, and. Um, you know, so that was just kind of a fluky deal, you know, and, and I, you know, the refs have the best view, you know, tape, you know, I, I can see why the quarterback did it. In his mind, he felt clearly like the guy had jumped and, and you know, the refs must have felt like he just maybe just got back. Um, but so he just throws it up very carelessly, which you would never do uh, in, in any other situation. And uh, that, was a, that was a critical, critical uh, error in the game. And then they had a special teams uh, play as well. Trey Lamar was saying he played probably 15 to 20 snaps and he just didn't do score today. Was that just something with their scheme or is there a chance he could help out with something there? No, it was definitely, you know, just the scheme we were playing. Uh, I mean, he's our starting backer. Uh, but, you know, we're pretty good shape at the end there. Uh, but he, uh, you know, just the style of play. You know, style of play. And you want to get as many of them dudes on the field as you can. Against a team like that, he you know, just stood up. He just a lot, a lot, a lot of times linebackers would go up, and stand up on the line, and things like that. That's all he did. Did not have that kind of versatility with him, though. Where he can yeah, to... yeah, absolutely. We, and we did a lot of that with BJ Goodson. You know, when BJ was here, uh, we walk him up on the line. Uh, you know, when we played uh, Georgia Tech and some other teams, and just stand him up. Uh, he's big enough and strong enough to be able to 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 play up there on the edge. Coach, how much wisdom? State does, formationally, how multiple they are, and given some of the issues last year in coverage, is there a different messaging or a different uh, utility for like Dorian, the safeties, guys like that in coverage? Does, does anything change this week for you? Well, I mean, what changes this week is you're playing an, an, an elite uh, uh, quarterback, you know, and that th th this kid, he's got all the tools, you know, I mean, he, he's. You give him things pre-snap, he's going to take them. Uh, he, uh, he knows how to process things post-snap. And then they just give him all the tools to, to help create uh, uh, good leverage uh, and, and, and tips, uh, whether it's, I mean, they very rarely, like I said, very rarely run a play without some type of motion or shift. And there's, you know, most of the time you don't just do that stuff to just do it. There's a reason. You're, you're trying to uh, get a tip on coverage. You're trying to get a tip on a blitz. Uh, and, and when you can get tips and you have a very smart player that can process things like that, like this quarterback, then you're just trying to give yourself uh, the best opportunity to be successful. So it, it is a challenge. Uh, if we got to line up right, uh, we have a, there's a lot of communication against a team like this, um, especially at safety. 
uh, that that's a this is a big challenge. And then the ball's in the air, so you know Dorian has to he has to do a little bit of everything. You know he's got to be supporting the physical in the running game. He's got to cover in the passing game. Um, and there's a lot going on in this passing game. I mean he's a and he's got to make plays on the ball in the air because it's it's going to be in the air. Uh, you can just bet on that. This ball's going down the field. So you know we got to win those matchups. Uh, the last time out with a game like this, we didn't win the matchups. You know, I mean, we just didn't. Um, and uh, we did a poor job on third down and, and didn't win some of the competitive plays up in Syracuse. Um, and be similar in that regard in that there's going to be a lot of those, a lot of those competitive plays. Uh, but they do a really good job of, of, of you know, different launch points, um, you know, for the quarterback. Climb routes, fade balls, uh, tied it in with the screen game and the crossers and the slants, the, the RPOs. I mean, so it's just it's a challenge. I mean, they're, they're really good. I mean, this is, that's why they are who they are. And they're smart. I mean, they got all these veteran guys that are really smart players. Against a quarterback like that, is it more important to disguise coverage and confuse him, or do you just want to be good at your base and win a matchup? Well, you better, be, you better know what you're doing, first of all. And you got to, yeah, at some point, you got to, I mean, you got to win your matchups. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. You want to try to do as much as you can to to mix it up uh, because if you you know he's one of them guys. If you just give him the same pitch over and over and over, uh, I mean you're gonna hit it. I mean you're a baseball guy, right? And so I don't care if that ball's coming 95. If you know it's coming 95, uh, you, you're probably gonna hit it eventually. You know you, you know if you know what's coming. And so we 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 definitely don't want to just you know, tip, tip, uh, tip our hat all the time. I mean, we want to we want to make sure that we mix things up and that we're diverse and multiple with our fronts and coverages. And you know, we've done a pretty good job of that uh, around here. Coach, what Deshaun's doing in the NFL comes as no surprise to you. How often do you uh, communicate with him, and how much would uh, having a rookie of the year quarterback do for the brand of Clemson, um, or would it be a marginal enhancement at this point? Uh, well, I mean, I, I don't know what it does for Clemson, uh, other than just, you know, we take a lot of pride in what our, what our alumni do, whether they go on to the NFL or they go solve cancer, uh, you know, I mean, we, we just take pride in all of our graduates and what they go on, uh, and do, but really proud of Deshaun, communicate with him, uh, text, just text him, you know, the other night, just congrats on it was a tough loss, but, you know, he, he put his team in position to win and, and uh, but he, he He'll be the first one to look at the mistakes he made and want to go get better. But just proud of him. He's just he's just doing exactly what he's always done. Uh, it's nothing any different. He's not any different now than he than he was at Gainesville High at Clemson and now with the Texans. I mean, he's just a he's just an unbelievable competitor and uh, just has such great uh, command and poise. Uh, he's an excellent leader. Makes everybody else around him better. Uh, but that just again always you know, speaks. Goes back to his preparation. Um, we've talked about something we've seen here, um, but just really happy for him. I mean, proud of him. It's it's pretty special. And, you know, I mean, if, if something like that happens, uh, first of all, just happy for him because he's put the work in. And, and um, you know, I just again think it says that. I mean, from Clemson standpoint, I mean, you can you can you can do anything here, uh, whether you whether it's a quarterback, receiver, or offensive lineman. Or, Defensive line and linebacker, whatever position we got, we got a little bit of everything and uh, and more to come at that level. The last two years, you guys have not been out of the top four in each of the playoff rankings when they started. Um, so you've not controlled your own destiny. If you're not in the top four, so how you comes out, how how are you looking at being different? How do you look at it the last two years? It's zero. I mean, they could have us tenth. It just, it just, it just doesn't matter. I mean, it just really doesn't matter. I mean, uh, if they have a second, and we get our butt beat this week, well, it don't matter. Uh, if, if they have us tenth, uh, but yet we went out, we'll be where we need to be. I think we've played a pretty good schedule, uh, or played a lot of teams that, that that have won a bunch of games and a lot of teams that have been in position to win some others, some very competitive uh, teams. So, so, you know, I mean, we just got to take care of business. I mean, it's that simple. It just doesn't matter. Uh, if you win, 
I think in all said and done, you, you'll have an opportunity uh, whenever the last poll comes out. That's the one that matters. Uh, and that's when, that's when you can really get a real answer uh, to that question as far as you know, how I would feel or how I view it uh, right now. It's just ir irrelevant. I know it's, I know it's uh, matters to the fans and, and all that stuff, but it is so irrelevant to what's going to happen in Raleigh this weekend. It just doesn't matter. Anything else? Thank you, Coach. All right, guys. Thank you.